What's going on? Today we're going to talk about Lightroom. What about Lightroom? We're going to talk about masks to be specific. Masks have been around for a while, but they're starting to migrate things from Photoshop into Lightroom that could just make your world so much better. And I'm going to show you how to do this. It's really simple. It's with a click of a button, you can select objects and manipulate certain things in a photo without affecting the whole photo. So let's jump into Lightroom. I'm going to show you how it's done. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom. What we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you can create a mask, keep you from going inside of Photoshop. Photoshop can be very daunting for some people. It's a very robust program. And yes, you can do a lot inside of Photoshop, but there's been things that have uh, Adobe has migrated over to Lightroom in order to um, make it a little bit easier inside of Lightroom and staying inside of one program. So there are some things that you still would have to go into Photoshop you know, at some time, I'm sure, but this right here can keep you in Lightroom and make your workflow a lot better and a lot faster. So let's get started. What you want to do is if you come up here, you'll see this icon right here. Now you can either hit that or you can hit Shift W and it will open this menu. Now, what you want to do is let's say you want to affect the sky only and you will hit sky and it'll pick it up just like that. Now that's pretty good. You can see there are a few things that are caught, but for the most part, it's pretty good. You can see it affecting only the sky and the, even the places that were selected aren't even really doing anything. So this is already out the gate you can see that it's a pretty powerful tool so let's back out of that now let's say you want to select the house so what I'll do is I'll come up here create a new mask and then there's a few different ways to do this so you can select object you can select a subject or you can use a brush I would not use a brush because the problem is it's it's tedious and it takes quite a while and you have to make sure it's almost perfect. So what I would do is let's see what select subject, see how much of the house it actually selects. Well, there you go. That's a that's actually pretty good. Now it has selected some bushes, which is very easy to take care of. In just a second, you can hit subtract, hit object. You can come up here and it'll take that out object again and you can take these bushes out of the equation if you want to hit it one more time let's get this out and subtract and we're going to take this out in there just like that if you want to change the color of the house boom you see you can do whatever you want to to it make it bright dark I mean you can see it did a pretty good job selecting all of it. So in the grand scheme of things, if you, things like this, normally you're not going to make major adjustments to there. You're just tweaking it. So as you tweak it, you can see that it's not affecting anything and no, it's, it's almost perfect. So let's get out of that. And let's say that we want to, let's say we want to use object. Let's select object. You'll make this a little bit bigger. We're going to come in here. We're going to select the bushes anyway. We're going to see how well this does. And come up here, select all that. Let's see what it does. Okay. Object, selecting an object actually did pretty good. Now there are here, this bush was selected. Again, hit sub, uh, subtract, subtract your object. Let's see what this does. And it actually just took that bush out. And again, you may have to clean up a little bit, but, and you can add objects too. So let's say we want to add this piece up here that it didn't even get. Let's see what it does. I mean, the thing is it saves so much time having to either brush it in or just go into Photoshop and figuring out how to get all this selected. Because again, when, in the grand scheme of things, when you're making minor adjustments, you can't really tell. And Let's just say you wanted to add some, add it by brush over here. You can, you can bring this in and then you can see it 
you can see it changing, but it's barely, right? Because it's shaded. So, but even if you wanted to make the adjustments here, you could like that. So that's a pretty powerful tool, tool to use. Let's say create a mask. Let's hit object. Let's say we wanted to, let's say we wanted to um, do the driveway. Let's see how well this does here because there's a lot of edges in here. And sometimes it can get messed up when it's trying to figure out what edge it should stop at. All right, so it got majority of the driveway. I'm gonna hit object, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna try to clean this thing up a little bit, make sure it gets all of it. And it did, and look, it didn't even, it didn't even affect the trees. So let's say we wanna just brighten that up. It didn't even affect the trees. And now in just a few seconds, you have already affected the driveway alone. So, I mean, it's good. I would use this. I use this quite often on photos. And if you feel comfortable going to Photoshop, by all means, go into Photoshop. But this is a way that you can affect smaller things in Lightroom in one program instead of having to jump into another program. So anyway, there you go. That is a, how to create masks inside of Lightroom. I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please hit like, subscribe if you haven't already for more Lightroom tutorials that will be coming up. And I'll see you in the next video.